Hey, before we get into it, the final Australia shows are in Ballarat, Warnable, and Shepherd, and regional shows in Victoria. That's amazing. Then I've got my UK tour kicking off in August. London, first show sold out. We added a second one. Then we've got Bristol. Then we've got Birmingham in it. Then we've got Manchester, first show sold out. We added a second one. What the fuck? Then we've got Liverpool, Leeds, Newcastle, Glasgow. We're about to announce uh, two dates in Ireland. I forget the one of them's Dublin. The other one's the other big one. Uh, that'll be announced at some point. Loosebeers.com. Come see me live. Also, episode 350 of Speared Sundays is on sale on my website right now. Fucking now, loosebeers.com. Get your tickets. I'll see you there. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 343 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. Welcome to the show. I've had a phenomenal weekend, a much better weekend than Joe Biden has had. Dear God. I watched the debates right before I got on stage in Adelaide. And uh, yeah, that man has dementia. Can, can we, I feel like we can say that. I feel like even he is saying that. You know what's deep, dude? The, look, I'm not a Trump guy, but I, but I, know, a, I know a dude whose brain doesn't work when I see one. I, what did I say on stage? It was like watching the dumbest guy win a debate against someone else, but they only won because the other guy's brain doesn't work. It's like, yeah, I beat the other guy. And the other guy's like, what time, what day is it? What's my name? Very brutal watching that clip of Jill Biden. Jill, is that is that her name? Jill Biden? His wife? Going, you did it, Joe! You answered every question! <laughs> That's a low bar. That's a very low bar to have your own wife being like, oh my God, you fucking answered all the questions. That's, that's above our expectations. It's not good. Although, here's, like, here's my favorite tweet. That Joe, that Joe put out, all right, well, of him just like admitting to kind of sucking. I don't know what it was, man. Because I have I think that's the worst that I've ever seen him speak. And I think that's because that's the first time I've ever seen him speak for more than 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Even, even Trump would seem to be going a little bit soft on Joe. Even if, and if Donald Trump is going easy on you, it's bad, you know? Because that guy was doing impressions of, of reporters with cerebral palsy on stage. <laughs> so for that guy to show you mercy, it's going to be bad. You know? My favorite thing about the debates, though, was uh, a couple days before the debates, the news platform hosting it, was it CNN? They posted, like, video of all of the rules, how the rules of the debate was going to go, right? And you could just tell... Every single rule that they instated was just for Trump. <laughs> just to stop Trump from doing what he did to Hillary Clinton in their debate. Rem remember that? Where like the debate before Trump and Hillary was uh, Obama and uh, was it Mitt Romney, the Republican guy maybe? And like that debate was literally the Republican guy going, Obama congratulations on your anniversary. It's an amazing achievement that you've been married to your beautiful wife for this long. I'm sorry that you have to spend this day with me having a debate. And then Obama was like, ha, 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 thank you very much, sir. And then right after the next presidential debate, Donald Trump's like, I'm not going to stand still. I'm not going to let this fucking ugly bitch talk. I'm going to talk over her. I'm going to dunk on her. Lock her in prison. And and we loved it. It was very funny. It was very funny and very entertaining. And that's where Trump needs to stay. He needs to stay in the funny motherfucker lane. And I think that's why he lost the, the next term. He lost to Joe Biden because, I don't know, he wasn't funny. Like during the entire election campaign, he was way too serious. I don't know if he was stressed out. He was worried about COVID. Everyone was betraying him or whatever the fuck was going on in his head, but he stopped being funny. And I'm telling you, man, that's why he lost. But now, funny Trump's kind of coming back. You know, 
Joe Biden slurred, dribbled on himself, half finished a sentence and then stopped talking. Trump comes out and goes, I don't even know what he said. I don't even think he knows what he said. <laughs> it was making me laugh, dude. Um, but anyway, the rules, right? So I think it was CNN that hosted, hosted the debates. Was it? I don't know. Fact check me. I don't give a fuck, okay? I, I, don't, I don't have a dog in this fight. Actually, look. All right. I want the most entertaining outcome, okay? But... Also, I'm someone who wants to immigrate, so I kind of I kind of want Joe Biden to win. Purely just so it will be easier for me to get into your country. That's who I want to win because I was reading the policies that Trump had and he was like we're going to clamp down on illegal immigration. And I was like, "Yeah." And then the next point was we were going to we're going to limit legal immigration. I was like, "No!" <laughs> I'm a single issue voter and it's and it's whoever keeps the borders the most open legally. Although at this point it does look like I would have a much easier fucking route going there by just fucking going going to America via Mexico, taking a bus down to New York and I'll get a free hotel. For as long as I want. You know? Anyway, the rules were so funny to watch. It was the the reporters were kind of acting out the debate and they were going, these are all of the rules. And every single rule, I was like, oh, that's for Trump. That's to stop Donald from, from doing a Donald thing. <laughs> right? So the big one was like, uh, each candidate is going to have two minutes after they're asked a question to respond to that question. And I was like, that's pretty good. That should keep things concise. Now, in any other debate before Trump, the politicians would probably try their best to stick to that time limit and then the host would give them a leeway of like a few seconds here and there to finish their sentence. But with this debate, they, they go, each candidate is going to have two minutes to answer their question and for those two minutes, their microphone will be turned on and they're going to see a time limit in their vision that tells them how much time they have left and when they've got 30 seconds left, it's going to change colour and then when the two minutes is up, automatically their microphone will be switched off, right? And that's a Trump rule to stop him from just talking for 10 minutes, for sure. But then they go, while the candidate who's been asked the question has their two minutes and their time is going, all right, the other candidate's microphone will be switched off. <laughs> Again, that's a Trump rule for sure. You watch that debate with Hillary Clinton, she would be like, okay, so um, what I think, and he'd be like, wrong, wrong, wrong. And it was funny, and that's why he won. Because she was in there going to debate someone, and he was in there going to a trash her, dunk on her, and make a mockery of the bitch. And it worked. Silly woman thought she was going to have a discussion. Nah, she was getting roasted and bullied. And I loved it. It was funny. And that's why he won. What was the other rule? Yeah, that was the, that was the really big one. Or oh, another one was like, uh, each candidate is going to have uh, a podium with a microphone physically attached to it. They made a point of saying it's going to be physically attached to the podium. Because that was another reason why Trump trashed Hillary. In the, in the previous debate, right? Because they were at podiums or they kind of had places where they were supposed to stand. Trump just took his handheld microphone off the stand and was like, I'm going to fucking walk for my bit. I'm going to walk all over this bitch. This stage is mine. And Hillary Clinton stupidly followed the rules and tried to stick to decorum. Silly woman. That's why she lost. Trump was out there going, hey, I'm a cool, funny guy. And that's why he won. And then that's why he lost, because he stopped doing that. But now he's back. What was another rule? Yeah, the microphones were going to be turned off. The microphones were bolted to the, to the podiums. Then they were like, uh, this uh, debate is going to be filmed uh, in, a, in a studio, uh, but there will be no audience. I was like, that's a Trump rule for sure, because you can't have laughs. Could you fucking imagine... 
like after the 25th time that Joe Biden got through a sentence, got through half a sentence, forgot where he was going, tried to pick it up again, and then got told by a moderator, that's your time, and then Trump dunked on him? Could you imagine hearing like 500 people laugh? That, I mean, that that shit wins elections, dude. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. You put Trump in front of an audience, he'll kill you. He'll fucking, he loves it. He, he knows how to whip up a crowd and he also knows how to, how to fucking antagonize the people that hate him there in a way that makes them look like fools by just fucking getting under their skin. He's good. That's the thing, man. I Like my favorite Trump is campaign Trump. I reckon we just let him campaign forever, you know? Like, honestly, I would be happy if, let's say he wins the election, right? And he he can't serve more than two terms, all right? But I would be very happy if, you know, after his second term is up and he can't become president again, I would still be very happy if he campaigned, right, for whoever the next Republican is, you know? Like, make him vice president, but he does all the speeches. That'd be fun. He's fucking... 86, 87, he's up there going, hey, lock her up. He's got dementia now. I think those were all of the rules that I that I was like listening to this. I was going, oh man, this is these are these are rules for Trump. You know? They should have had some rules for Biden. Like, you know, if you start a sentence, you have to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. And I gotta turn my heater off. I'm hot! Oh, hang on. Why don't I just take my jacket off? That's probably a, a better idea. Dude, I found, I found a, a nice, a nice fucking crew neck t-shirt that really fits me. I'm looking. I'm looking good, man. I'm looking, I'm looking hot. I, I heard some woos in Adelaide. From some some beautiful ladies in the audience that I've never heard in my life. I think that we're entering a new era of sex appeal spears. You know what I thought? You, this is how I know that I'm getting sexy as. Okay? This is how I know that it's over for you. Okay? Because I I I annihilated. I did two such such amazing shows in a row. The early show was actually the 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 hot one. That was the good one, which is usually rare. Usually the late shows are the super good one. They were both amazing, but I've never had the early be better than the late. But that's just how it goes. I was on I was on one, right? And I got off stage after the late show, which was phenomenal. And I thought I need to grow my hair out. <laughs> like that's where my self-esteem is going, where I'm like I should have long hair. You know, it's it's getting to be a problem. I've never been hot before. I don't know what to do with it. If I'm being completely real, my personality and my perceived social status was doing all the heavy lifting for me. Now, someone could look at me and go, damn, attractive guy. I don't know what to do with it. I'm trying, I'm trying to remember. Here's where I'm at, okay? I've got, I've got a, I've got a hot face, but don't you worry, I've got an ugly soul. Not a soul, I've got a beautiful soul, all right? I'm a kind man. And don't, and don't you forget, don't you forget that I'm emotionally intelligent, okay? Don't you forget that I'm emotionally intelligent, aware, and sensitive. But I have, I have the personality of an ugly motherfucker. And those people have the best personalities. You ever meet a beautiful girl who used to be fat? What? She's funny? <laughs> what the fuck? I'm liking this conversation? Whoa! Dudes that lose a lot of weight, though, they kind of go two different ways, do they? Don't they? Women who lose a fuckload of weight and become hot? Or have a big glow up, or they or they were ugly as kids, they're late bloomers, you know? Weird, ugly librarian looking girls that hit 23 and out of nowhere grow massive tits. 
Like, fuck, she's got a personality and those? Cheating. It's a cheat code. Men kind of go two different ways. And I'm trying to pick the good way, all right? But if you, like, if you meet a girl that used to be very heavy, she loses all the weight, becomes very beautiful. Fuck, I would, what a conversation she can hold. But a dude that used to be real fat, lost a bunch of weight, that man, that man can harbor a lot of resentment. You know? Like you ever, you ever meet a guy who used to be like 200 kilos and then, and then gets a six pack? Like he was 200 kilos for fucking eight years of adulthood. And then out of nowhere, he gets, he, he just, he just sees, I don't know, an Andrew Tate TikTok and just goes to the fucking gym, gets ripped. And then he's hot and then he's getting, getting attention. And he's, and, and instead of going, and instead of keeping the lovely, sweet, chubby boy that he was, that got by by making people laugh and charming them with his sweet personality despite his giant man titties. He's just like, you know what? Now that I can bench 150, women are whores. (laughs) Now that I can squat 200 kilos, you know what I've realized? Chicks suck. And I hate them. (laughs) <laughs> something about going to the gym dude turn some men into into just vicious misogynist it's got it's got to be the podcast they're listening to that's the problem you know because we've all you know i'm 30 now i'm a bit bored of going to the gym i've been doing it since i was 18 Not that you can tell, but I've been putting on a little bit of weight recently. That's what happens when you got a when you got a fucking throat that actually can fit food in it. I've got a I've got a lot of respect for for those deep throat queens out there because that was me pre-surgery just trying to have breakfast. Just not enough room, but I was getting it down anyway. Isn't it funny how I can start talking about like global politics and then we just get get to like me relating women deep throating dicks to me eating breakfast? What was the point I was trying to make? I think that Joe Biden is uh I think that he has dementia for sure. Like I think that's where we're at. Cuz it's it's not that it's not that crazy like man in his fucking 80s working harder than anyone else in the country like let's be real even if you even if you think he's the worst president ever they're fucking working that man hard even if you think that he's doing nothing and everyone else is making all the decisions which is probably true that man is traveling and speaking marketing showing up to presses that dude is working hard. I mean, I did two shows in Adelaide. I'm fucked. You know, I did two. I just, I got up at 5.30 a.m. today, Sunday. It's fucking 4 p.m. now. I did two shows last night and I'm doing a podcast. If I was Joe Biden's age, the podcast would be something like, hey, so I said, I said uh, to, to, so I said, I said to, listen here, Bargo. Uh, 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 what we need, what we need to do with immig- immigration is, uh, and that's why I think that uh, that abortion should be, and you know, and this, this, my son is not a, is not a sucker. You're a sucker, and you're fat, and I, and I I'm really good at golf. Never played golf in my life. I'm just fucking. St- talking shit i could beat you at golf because you're fat it's like brother you couldn't walk down a hill without falling over that was the weirdest shit ever like when i watched them argue over who would be who would beat the other one at golf i was like oh america's cooked you know 
That's why that's why people are like, are you sure you want to go to America? It's like, fuck yeah, dude. I've got the ripcord, you know? At the end of the day, I've got an Australian passport. If it all goes to shit, I'll jump on a plane, brother. You know? Get the fuck out of there. All right, see ya. I'm going to the other side of the planet. Good luck. If you're American and you're watching those two go at it, being like, fuck, we got to pick one. (laughs) One of them. Fuck. Good luck. I think... I think Trump wins. Although I did say this last election and I was wrong. But I I don't know. I just think that I think... Here's what I think. I think that this election, right? America's election right now is love versus hate. That's what it is. And I'm not saying that one... I'm not saying that one candidate represents love and the other represents hate. What I'm saying is I think that everyone who's voting for Trump loves Trump. And I think that everyone hate and I think that everyone voting for Joe Biden hates Trump. That's what I mean. It's the election of love and hate. The people voting for Trump love him. The people voting for Biden hate Trump. And we're going to see if love is more powerful than hate. Because I don't think anyone voting for Joe Biden loves him. And I think we're just going to see what motivates people to go out and vote. Is it love or is it hate? They're both very powerful. And the people that love Trump love Trump. But the people voting for Joe Biden hate Trump. Either way, the election is about Trump. It's like Donald Trump versus, uh, I guess, President Donald Trump, President Joe Biden. Like that's whoever wins, that's how their supporters are going to talk about them. If Trump wins, all the people that voted for him are going to be like, yes, we've got Donald Trump. If Joe Biden wins, everyone who voted for him is going to be going, yes, we don't have Donald Trump. And then they're going to go, ah, we've got Joe Biden. Maybe the next candidate will be good. Maybe he'll die in office and he'll be replaced by someone better. As long as we don't have Trump, I guess I'm okay with that. That's the election. It's love versus hate, and we're going to see what motivates people more. And I, th- and I, and I believe in the power of love. <laughs> I don't think that Donald Trump is the candidate of love, but I do believe that his supporters love him. You know, no one's wearing Joe Biden hats. Everyone's wearing Trump hats. That's that is the vibe. It's like, I have to vote for Donald Trump because he's going to save us. I have to vote for Joe Biden because I hate Donald Trump. (laughs) It's like the most excited people ever voting for their guy versus the most begrudgingly apathetic people that are picking Joe Biden because they have to. Oh, well, I don't like the other guy, so. I think that's America's problem. I, I don't think voting should be optional. I think that despite all the flaws of our government, I think the one thing that Australia absolutely fucking nailed is compulsory voting. And I know that Americans are all like, oh, freedom, and you can't make us do anything. And it's like, well, you know, we, we can, all right? You, you have to wear a seatbelt. There's a bunch of things that you guys have decided is more important than freedom. And I feel like forcing you to do a fucking chore, like participate in democracy, is probably better than, yeah, you, if you want to, 
Because, because I just I just think that, like in Australia, no one likes who they're voting for. No one likes the guy they're voting for. The difference between Australian politics and American politics, from what I can see as an outside observer, is so many people in America love their guy. And they love their party, even if they don't love their guy. In Australia, every politician is a dickhead, especially the guy you're voting for. Because like America, we put a woman in charge once and decided we'll never do that again. Although, actually, we actually did that shit, you know? We fucking put her in there. And then a bunch of men were like, nah, get her out. And then the whole country was like, didn't I vote for that bitch? I thought she was the fucking, oh, well, whatever. They're a bunch of dickheads anyway. Whereas in America, right, if you voted in a president, you voted them because you fucking love them. Or because you fucking hate the other guy. And then if the president was the president, then fucking two years in, a bunch of other people were like, oh, we don't want him. A bunch of Americans would go to war. But if that was a compulsory chore that you had to do, you probably would have gone, ah, fuck it, he was a dickhead anyway, I didn't want to vote. What I'm saying is, I think that compulsory voting is better, obviously because everyone gets a say, whatever. But what I, why I think it's better is, is I think because if voting is voluntary, right? Politicians only have to win over fucking freak nerds. Because if voting was an option, I wouldn't be doing it. For real. I wouldn't be doing it unless a politician came around and was like, I'm going to kill everyone who's six foot eight. And then their opponent was like, I'm going to make sure everyone who's six foot eight gets six goth bitches with big natural titties delivered to their door. Then I'm going to vote for the guy who's going to give me goth bitches or for the guy who's going to kill me, depending on my mood. <laughs> right? That's what I mean. If, if voting is an option, I would only vote if it was a fucking emergency for me personally. And if that wasn't happening, I wouldn't really pay attention because I can't be fucked. I don't want to, I don't want to go there and cast my vote. Voting sucks. It's annoying. It's one of the most beautiful, amazing privileges that we have here in Western society. And it's a fucking chore and I hate doing it every time. And that's how it should be. You shouldn't be showing up to polling booths and voting booths. Be like showing off your fucking stick out going, look at me, I voted. And come on guys, we should all vote. And, and people fucking appealing to whoever is within driving distance. It should be a fucking chore that you hate and it should make you resent even the person that you're voting for. That's how a country's run. The minute you're like, I love my candidate, you're a sucker because you shouldn't love them. They're all dickheads and they're all liars. The minute you're showing up to a fucking rally wearing clothes and a hat and, a, and, and showing off your fucking sticker that you voted, you're a fucking dork loser. You've been manipulated. And the power is in the politician's hands because most people don't vote. Not because they don't care, but because they can't be fucked. And that's why it should be compulsory because it compels the entire population to at least, when they're in the booth, to go, mm, what do I actually feel about immigration? Do I want health care? Are taxes too high? What do I think about presidents fucking porn stars? Is that cool or nah? And I feel like it, it, it forces politicians to at least acknowledge the average person. Because the average person 
given the choice, not voting. I wouldn't do it. My dad never registered to vote. I'm so fucking jealous of him. He's never done it. I was going to do that. And then someone else in my life registered me against my will. And every day I think that fucking bitch. Now I'm here. I guess I'll vote for this dickhead. And I do my research and I feel like that gets us the best candidates. And they're all dickheads. I think it incentivizes politicians to represent people, not to try and make a significant chunk of a significant demographic in a portion of the country that counts the most to like them. Politicians shouldn't be likable. They should do a good job. All right? Do you know what a likable politician is? Do you know what a politician that everyone loves is 100% of the time? Dictator. Or assassinated by the CIA. (laughs) JFK or Hitler. They loved him. They bloody loved him, didn't they? Old Hitty. They loved his guts. Have you seen him speak? Fuck. It's moving. Now that you can translate Hitler's speeches into English with AI, he he was good. I don't agree, but fuck, he spoke well. And that's the problem, all right? That's why you can't have compulsory voting. Was voting compulsory in Nazi Germany? Let me look it up. I bet it wasn't. I'll eat my. I'll delete the whole podcast if it was. Uh, let me ask. Uh, let me ask my. Uh, Ugly girlfriend who I've put in the AI friend zone. God, she's gotten so much slower. Hey, baby. um, During uh, Adolf Hitler's campaigning, was voting for Germans compulsory or was it optional when he was elected? During Adolf Hitler's rise to power, Voting in Germany was technically not compulsory. I told you! The climate was heavily manipulated. The Nazis used propaganda, intimidation, and violence to influence the outcome of elections uh, and referendums. Uh, so, while voting was optional, uh, the environment was far from free. I'm, I'm telling you, dude. I'm telling you, the only way to run a country is compulsory voting. Because if it's optional, you're going to get someone that everyone really, really loves, and he's going to come up with a really cool uniform and a fucking dope-ass logo that looks sick on a sticker without the context that it's attached to. And that's how you get Adolf Hitler. All right? It's got to be compulsory because it turns voting into a chore, which makes the entire population resent even the person they're voting for. That's how you keep politicians in check. All right, I'll vote for you, dickhead, but you better fucking do what you said you were going to do because I don't want to be here on a Sunday. I want to be hanging out with my kids, you fuckhead. That's how you run a country. You're welcome. All right? Voting should be compulsory. The whole reason why... America's political system is so fucked is because it's a popularity contest. And it's not just to to make everyone like you. It's to make anyone, even the fringe crazy fucks, like you enough to ruin an entire day and stand in a fucking queue. Are you kidding? Like, let's be real. If voting was optional and there was a candidate who was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to fucking, my, my policy is to fill the oceans with oil and uh, get rid of the monetary system and, uh, and, and make every single transaction uh, a blow job. If it, as horrible as that may be, even, even if they're like their, their leading policy was like, yeah, anyone called Lewis, we're going to skin them and then, and then roll them down a, a salt hill. Even knowing that if I, if I like walked past the voting booth and I saw like a really long line, I'd be like, ah, I just hope he doesn't win. 
and that's good enough for me. You know? You gotta be a fucking loser dork freak to vote. If you have the option. Absolutely. And that's the problem. Because you got fucking loser dork freaks trying to attract other loser dork freaks. And the only cunt that's act like a, like a huge portion of your campaign is is about attracting the type of person that would wear a fucking A frame and your name on their hat. Like that guy's insane. He shouldn't he shouldn't be catered to. And if you make every single person vote, that guy's a crazy cunt. You don't have to appeal to him at all. But because it's optional. And then you also get shit like, if it's optional, you get shit like, oh, I have to appeal to, like, religious networks. Right? Because then they're a huge demographic that you have to win over because those cunts love doing something fucking boring for four hours on a Sunday. They're used to it. They'll just swap out a a Sunday service for a fucking queue and a sticker. Whatever I'm used to, it's a community event. The pastor goes up, we're voting for this guy because he took our money and promised us this. All right, we'll go there. If it's optional, half the people voting for you are fucking loons. Anyway, I've repeated myself enough. Welcome to the show. Dr. Disrespect is done. Dr. Disrespect, the age of consent. Dr. Disrespect was, unfortunately, one of the only streamers that I found entertaining. I never I never got into stream. Even when I was a streamer, as fun as it was during COVID, it was kind of only fun because I couldn't leave my house and I was going crazy. And I couldn't do it for more than four hours without it making me depressed. I don't know what it is. Something about being live for like really more than three hours made me sad. Couldn't deal with it. So all these fucking losers and freaks streaming for eight hours every day, something wrong with them. And if there's not, there will be. As we found out with Dr. Disrespect, all right? Six foot eight, married, beautiful man, very handsome, multi, multi, multi multi-millionaire, the biggest dude on Twitch, Funny as fuck, incredible brand, unbelievable business acumen, had absolutely everything, even had a private life that not many people knew about because he was playing a character when he was in front of the camera. All he had to do is not try and fuck a minor. But as we know, with anyone who plays Minecraft for too long, As a public figure, something gets into your brain. I maybe I should message the underage girl. Kill you. Don't. I would never say that. Look, Dr. Disrespect, four years ago, got banned from Twitch after signing an unbelievably lucrative exclusive streaming deal with them. They then banned him from the platform just four days after tweeting out this very cryptic and vague thing essentially about the me too movement that was happening at the time i believe this was 2020 so the me too thing was going on and then it kind of made its way into the streaming world twitch puts out a statement going we have no tolerance for sexual harassment and sexual misconduct and blah blah blah. we stand by victims all that and then a few days later dr disrespect gets his account banned for no reason he doesn't say why they don't say why And then some kind of settlement is reached. He is paid out all of his money, admits to no wrongdoing, and everyone stays silent about it. And everyone just kind of assumed that that must must have meant that Twitch did something really wrong and they didn't want to risk going to court over it because they were definitely going to lose so that they they just paid him out and they both agreed to leave it alone. But I, I don't know, I hate being one of those, oh, I always knew there was something wrong with him. I never knew there was something wrong with him, but I always disagreed with that narrative. I always thought that seems a little bit weird because if Twitch was definitely in the wrong, I don't think they would ban such a moneymaker for no 
fucking reason seemed weird but then i didn't care about streaming so i kind of forgot about it but another fishy thing that also made me go that's interesting is at the time twitch and youtube were fighting over the top talent right and one of the top number one guys just became a free agent and youtube never signed him but not only did they never sign him they never promoted him at all and look I'm in this thing of ours, Tony Soprano moment. So even I hear whispers that you would be surprised that I would that I would hear. I never heard anything about this at all because I'm not in the streaming world at all. But I do understand that when shit like that happens, where it's like giant company drops him, their competitor doesn't touch him, doesn't promote him, doesn't even acknowledge that the guy's uploading to YouTube, which is weird because he was the biggest guy on YouTube after the ban, even bigger than a lot of their streamers that they signed and, you know, promoted because they were signed to YouTube. They didn't promote him once and I didn't know anything about it, but I saw that and I was like, something's happened that a select few decision makers seem to know about that they can't speak about, but they're acting accordingly. Do you know what I mean? Something is going on. But then I forgot about it because, again, I don't give a fuck about a dude in a wig playing video games for eight hours a day. It's just not, it's not been my thing. But now, four years after that ban, almost to the day, a former Twitch employee came out and said, Dr. Disrespect got banned because he was using Whisper, which at the time was like a test that Twitch was rolling out, basically a DM feature, I think. I don't really understand it, but I think it was a way for um, streamers to predate on their underage fans, apparently. A way to message, you know, fans, Um, which I don't know why Twitch would need, but they tried it out. And apparently, according to this former Twitch staffer, Dr. Disrespect was... uh, having explicit conversations with a minor that he knew was underage uh, and then continued on after finding out they were underage, right? So this comes out and then Twitter loses their shit. A bunch of people start standing up for him because at the same time, all this fucking pro versus anti-trans shit was happening, but I'm not going to get into that. And Dr. Disrespect put out probably the weirdest fucking response to allegations that I've seen ever, right? Dr. Disrespect put out the worst (laughs) response to allegations, right? Let's look. Okay. Initially, he said, listen, I'm obviously tied to legal obligations from the settlement with Twitch, but I just need to say what I can say since this is the fucking internet. I did not do anything wrong. All this has been probed and settled. Nothing illegal, no wrongdoing was found, and I was paid. Elden Ring, Monday, right? This shit goes out, bunch of people start standing up for him. I read it and I go, "Mm, no wrongdoing was found. I don't know about that. It just seems like a weird, like he doesn't address... The actual allegation. Someone's like, he was messaging minors. He doesn't say that he wasn't. He just says, I was paid and no wrongdoing was admitted. Very legalese speak, not convincing at all, right? Then an article in Bloomberg comes out talking to a bunch of former staffers and a bunch of anonymous people and basically saying that explicit photos were exchanged or attempted to be exchanged even after he knew the age, right? And if Bloomberg is saying this shit, it's like they would have seen evidence. Could have been fabricated evidence, but they would have done enough due diligence to confidently say he was trying to fuck a minor, right? Because if they even had a shadow of a doubt that what they had seen was not true or fake evidence... There's no way they would run that stuff because he would sue them, rightfully so, for so much fucking money. 
But just before they drop that article, he tries to get ahead of it. And Dr. Disrespect releases the worst response to allegations that I've seen yet. And I've seen a lot of Minecraft YouTubers do very poorly with this. The Twitch ban. Hello. I'd like to make a quick statement. And it's 15 paragraphs. I'm going to skim through this. <clears throat> and he does it. The worst part about this response to allegations that he was trying to have sex with a minor is that he does it in character as Dr. Disrespect. Big mistake. I'd be taking the wig off when I was typing this, you know? That fake bulletproof vest took control of his fingers and typed this shit out. Let's cut the fucking bullshit. As you know, there's no filter with me. I've always been upfront and real with you guys on anything that I can be upfront about. And I'm always willing to accept responsibility, which is why I'm here now. Yeah. There's always been no filter. I've always been upfront and real, says the guy in a fucking costume with using a fake name. First and foremost, I do want to apologize to everyone in my community, as well as those close to me, my team, and everyone at Midnight Society Game Studio. That was another one. Before this came out, the game studio that was making a game basically designed with him, where he would be the main marketing component of this game, dropped him from the company. So that's when I knew it was definitely real because that was basically the company, everyone else in the company going, we know this is, that this is going to make our game fail, but we can't work with this fucking pedo. So we're going to choose going broke with dignity over making stacks of money with a dude who's trying to fuck a minor. A lot of people have been left in the dark about what happened yesterday with Midnight Society and I, and we made the painful decision collectively to have me step down. Our team is full of incredibly talented and good people that have high career ambitions and families, and I'd never want to jeopardize the culture we have carefully crafted. Okay. Everyone has been wanting to know why I was banned from Twitch, but for reasons outside of my control, I was not allowed to say anything for the last several years. Now that two former Twitch employees have publicly disclosed the accusations, I can now tell you my side of the story regarding the ban. And here's where it goes off track. <clears throat> Were there Twitch whisper messages with an individual minor back in 2017? The answer is yes. Oh! See you later. Bye! Were there ever, and this, it gets worse, were there ever real intentions behind those messages? The answer is absolutely not. Oh, it doesn't matter. Also, don't believe you. That's the fucking Chris Hansen defense. Every single fucking pedo that showed up to a house after they'd been flirting with someone they knew was underage was like, yeah, but I wasn't actually going to fuck her. Yes, you were, brother. You got condoms in your pockets. This is, these were casual, mutual conversations that sometimes leaned too much in the direction of being inappropriate, but nothing more. Nothing illegal happened. Yes, it did, brother. She's a minor. That's called grooming, grooming, grooming. That's a crime. Ever heard of attempted murder? You can't show up to someone's house with a fucking gun, point it. And then go, oh, I changed my mind. I'm going to go home. That you f That's attempted murder, dude. That's like, that's like sending someone a death threat and be like, yeah, but I wasn't. Didn't mean it. Uh, kind of doesn't matter, brother. If you send someone a fucking message being like, oh, I'm going to see you after work at 5.30 with a fucking knife and kill you. Then you get arrested for it. Like, Yo, but I wasn't actually going to do it. Nothing, nothing happened. So nothing illegal happened. No pictures were shared. No crimes were committed. I never even met the individual. That no pictures were shared thing. That's seemingly coming into dispute whether or not that's true as well from what a lot of other people in articles are saying. Uh, but I don't know. I went through a lengthy arbitration regarding a civil dispute with Twitch, and that case was resolved by a settlement. Let me be clear, it was not a criminal case against me, and no criminal charges have, have ever been brought against me. What's come out since this apology is Twitch not only banned him uh, and deleted his shit after signing him, they also reported him 
to the uh, department that investigates sex crimes against children. So I don't know. Something's happened. A lot of people are saying that that Twitch needs to release the messages that were sent. I disagree because at the end of the day, there is a fucking minor involved in this and their identity should never be known because they are, you know, a victim. And I feel like releasing messages and casting speculation on what happened and who this kid is, it's like, I know enough, all right? If a guy is coming out and personally saying and and admitting to, you know, I mean, the dude was 37, I believe, when this was going, and he's fucking messaging some child. See ya. That's all I need to know. From a moral standpoint, I'll absolutely take responsibility. I should have never entertained these conversations to begin with. That's on me. That's on me as an adult, a husband, and a father. It should have never happened. I get it. I'm not perfect, and I'll fucking own my shit. This was stupid. Reading that, this and and him going, nothing illegal happened and I had no intention of doing it. It reads like classic guy who is a predator but doesn't feel like a predator because he knows that predators are evil monsters. When really, most people who do bad things, they actually aren't this evil mastermind that is thinking ahead and going, I want to kill this person. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to show up there. I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to murder them. It's not, that does happen. And those are the most evil people. But most of the bad things that people do to each other are heat of the moment, not thought out decisions committed Uh, by people who kind of think of themselves as like the average guy or girl. You know? Like not many murders are meticulously planned out and acted upon. They're usually just, ah, fuck, I lost control. Something in my brain snapped and, oh, God, what have I done? Same with most sexual assaults, same with most assaults, same with most fucking crimes in general. It's like spur of the moment, heat of the moment. And that doesn't excuse or lessen what they are. And in fact, how you act when you're kind of not thinking is a lot more representative of the type of person that you are than... The type of person you are when you're like, all right, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do that. And that's why it's so important, especially as men, to kind of think about your actions and think about your habits and think about your thoughts and work on yourself and try your best to be a good man. Because in the heat of the moment, when you're drunk, when you're under the influence of drugs, when you're fucking horny, when you're angry, when you're sad, when you're excited and feeling invincible, how you act in those moments of high emotion, that can determine your entire future and the entire future of another person and define who you are as a human. So an evil person is not always someone who's like, yes, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to go down to Bunnings and buy a rope and use it to kill an animal because I'm evil. An evil person is just like, dude, watch this. In front of their friends trying to impress them, make them laugh, they fucking kill an animal and everyone's horrified, but you're like, oh, fuck. You know? I think people have a warped view of the mind state that that people who commit bad acts are in. I don't think many people who commit evil acts think of themselves as evil. 
even after they've done it. So reading this guy being like, oh yeah, I was like messaging a minor sexually explicit things and, but I wasn't going to do anything. It's like, dude, you've committed the evil act. Like you're in there. It's like, I wasn't going to do anything because people who do that are evil and I don't feel like a bad person. It's like no one feels like a bad person, almost especially people who do very bad things. You know, like when I was fucking 17, smashing up cars to make my friends laugh, I was having a great time. I was excited. I was influenced by peer pressure and heat of the moment. And I was making dumb decisions. Now I'm like, oh, that was, that was fucking bad. Uh but when I was doing it, I didn't think of myself as bad. And I don't think that anyone really thinks of themselves as evil. Even people who commit evil acts. That's pretty rare. That's the stuff that you see on television. That's the stuff you see in, in dramatized fucking true crime podcasts and stuff. It's not really how most people think of themselves. Like if you watch, a, if you fucking watch um, interviews with people who have gotten out of jail decades after doing bad things not many of them think of themselves as bad people even when they reflect on their own mindset that they were in when they were committing those acts not many of them like they can go they can go what i did was bad but like i'm not bad it's like you are your actions bro and you can you know obviously reform and become a better person and that's what we all strive to do but like yeah, seeing seeing a fucking husband and a father being like, I mean, yeah, I was like, I was like fucking messaging a minor, but I, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna do anything because I'm not a, I'm not a predator. It's like, dude, you are, you're doing it. Um. Anyway. Oh, he. I mean, he literally says this. I've gotten ahead of myself here. I'm going off, off on this rant about how most predators don't think of themselves as predators because most predators think predators are evil and they know in their own head, I'm not evil. I'm a nice guy. Listen to this. Now, with all this said, don't get it fucking mistaken. I've seen all the remarks and labels being thrown around so loosely. Social media is a destruction zone. I'm no predator or pedophile. Are you kidding me? No, you're messaging a minor. That's what a predator does. That's called grooming, brother. I'm no fucking predator or pedophile. Are you kidding me? Anyone that truly knows me fucking knows where I stand on, the, on, on those things with those types of people. Fuck that. That's a different level of disgust that I fucking hate even hearing about. Don't be labeling me as the worst of the worst with your exaggerations. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Dude. A predator is not only the person that plans it out, knows what they're doing, and goes through with the act. There's fucking levels to it, and you are one. You're on fucking... You're, you're halfway there, dude. You are you have arrived. But I think I've said what I needed to say regarding the ban itself. That's it. That's why Twitch made the decision in 2020. To my team, community, industry friends that have supported me, I apologize. I wish I could have said all of this sooner. You guys have always showed me and my family love and support throughout these years. We love you guys like you can't imagine. I have the fucking best community and circle. If any of you have, if any of this have made you uncomfortable, I get it. You don't have to support me anymore, and just know you have always been greatly appreciated. And this is, this is the bit where this made me laugh, because he's written all of this. And there's quite a few typos in here. The grammar's awful. Like, you you know that this guy didn't even run it through ChatGPT. Like, he didn't show a PR crisis manager. He didn't show his fucking wife. He didn't... I mean, it, this, this would have gone... This would have been a lot better if he even showed one of his young kids. And they went, Daddy, this is fucking retarded. You know? This is all him. And, and it's this bit, the last... The last, second last paragraph. This is where you you know that he fucking typed it out and he and he read it back. He was like, fuck yeah, dude. This is cool. Like everything he's written now, he's like, all right, I've addressed this. I've addressed that. I've addressed this. 
I'm going to lose some people, but most people love me. I'm fucking all over it because I know in my head that I'm not a bad guy because predators are evil and I know that I'm not evil. Thoroughly misunderstanding people's perception of what he has done and is admitting to. This is where he felt really cool. But trust me when I say this. To all my haters that live and breath social media with zero real life experience, I don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> bro, he felt so cool writing that. You know he did. And he, and bro, with a typo, to all my haters that live and breath social media with zero real life experience, I don't give a fuck about you. Yeah, you do, bro. Every day you wake up and you put on a wig and a fucking costume. You play a character. You're up there on a stage, man. You love it. You care heaps. I do. Finally, if you're uncomfortable with this entire statement and think I'm a piece of shit, that's fine. It's not. He's crying. But I'm not fucking going anywhere. I'm not the same guy that made this mistake all those years ago. Four years ago. I'm taking it when he was a fully grown married adult with kids. I'm taking an extended vacation with my family, as mentioned on stream, and I'm coming back with a heavy weight off my shoulders. They want me to disappear. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, fucking right. Guitar solo. Bro, you're a groomer. Bye. Done. Finished. It's all over. <laughs> and then he edited the tweet and removed the word minor after he had posted it. And then because you can see edit history, everyone was like, hey, bro. Uh, what? Why did you remove minor? Is that because a minor was not involved? I'm confused. Because if a minor wasn't involved, I guess that's kind of scummy for cheating on your wife, but like it makes it very, very different. Did you mean to do that? And then he edited it again and put minor back in. Bro, imagine editing the word minor back into your apology. <laughs> That's going to feel significantly less cool than writing, I don't give a fuck about you. To all you haters who live and breath social media with no real life experience. Oh, hang on. Let me just put minor back into my apology about <laughs> messaging fans. Oh, sorry. I, f I accidentally removed the word minor and now I got to put it back in. Oopsie. Dude. Guys finished and good riddance. But yeah, man, like for real, I think that this is a, it's a really common thing that you see with, uh, with all predators and, 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 uh, even a lot of people who, who commit objectively horrific acts that no one would, you know, be on the fence about none of, not many of them think that they are bad people, you know? Sometimes the closest people get is like, oh, I'm a really good guy who made a really dumb mistake. Um, and maybe that's just how human beings are. Like, could you imagine if we, if we had like, I mean, thinking of yourself as evil is kind of like, it's almost a mental illness. Like, if, like humans don't. We, we can't really have the capacity to think of ourselves as bad or evil, even if we have committed bad and evil acts repeatedly. It's kind of not something that a lot of people can get to. So when, when people, you know, have, have done things that they often just be like, oh, I, I, I couldn't possibly be a predator. I couldn't possibly be a rapist because that's a fucking evil thing. And I'm not evil because I'm nice to my mom. Or like, I'm good with my little brother. Or the other day I gave $10 to a homeless guy. So like, you know, I'm not evil. Like that, like that guy, he's evil because he did a did an evil thing. I know, <laughs> you know what it is? I know my brother over there does not contain multitudes like I do. You know what I mean? Like that's, it's, it's a real selfish way of thinking where, where it's like, cause I know that I know every single thing that I have done and I know what I was thinking when I did it. 
right? So I know that, of course, I've I've hurt people uh, feelings. I'm not uh, feelings. I've hurt people's feelings. <laughs> you know, I've done things that I regret. We all have, right? But I also know that I've done amazing things for people and I've done beautiful things for people. And it's a lot easier for me to look at the things that I regret doing and be like, they don't count. That's not me. I am that one time I saw a homeless guy outside of IGA and I bought him a, a, a power raid. Because there was a two for one deal. That's me. But that's not me either. Like that's, I did that because there was a good deal on and I was in a good mood. I'm not doing that shit all the time. I've done that once. You know? That's not me. That's a part of me that I can be proud of. But I am also the things that I am not proud of. So I feel like when people commit Awful things, especially when they're not thinking it through, when it's a spur of the moment, not that it excuses it at all. It's very easy for those people to look at that bad act and be like, yeah, I mean, I might have done that, but like, dude, I fucking had a, a lovely lunch with my mum the other day and I paid for it and, and she's old, so I'm cool. I'm a good guy and I've given money to charity or or I smiled at the at the old man at the shops and I had a conversation with him and, and he was really lonely and he really appreciated that and... Uh, and, and, you know, I know that, that I contain multitudes, but I know that this, this brother over here who committed almost exactly the same act as me, he's just evil. He's only this act. He's never been a good person. Um, and that's why I know that even though I've acted uh, this way, I'm not a predator because predators are evil and I'm not evil. I'm, I contain multitudes, but my brother over there does not. <laughs> so anyway... Joe Biden's brain fell out. Dr. Disrespect is uh, finished. And uh, that's probably the episode, guys. Thank you very much for listening to me rambling. Uh, I hope this is what you wanted. Um, Keelan is here. He, he's, I just turned his microphone off for this episode. Uh, thank you very much for listening. I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. Come see me live, loosebeers.com. Uh, thank you very much, Adelaide, for two beautiful shows and Tasmania as well. Loved them. Great fun. And I'll talk to you on Patreon uh, or next Sunday. I hope you have a shit one. Bye.